Hey, welcome back to another pour with Drepper Stone. And today I'm going to talk about the Basil Hayden toast. Um, I have a little bit of a relationship with the Basil Hayden brand. And if you are a member of Patreon, you're going to see the rest of this video. If you're not, come join us on Patreon so you can check out my review of the Basil Hayden toast. So, hey patrons, so here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to discuss a little bit about Basil Hayden, uh, a little bit about my relationship with the, the brand as a whole, and uh, we're going to crack into this bottle. Let me grab a Glen Karen real quick. There we go. Fresh Glen Karen. Um, yeah, this one looks a little dirty. Let's get a different one. There it is. That's the right one. Okay, so my relationship with the Basil Hayden brand uh, actually goes back to my first expensive bottle of whiskey, and it was the original Basil Hayden. I haven't had a, a bottle of Basil Hayden in quite some time, like a regular Basil Hayden. There's some uh, there's some rye back there, and there's this uh, Caribbean Reserve rye that we'll feature at some point. Um, but a bottle of Basil Hayden has a little bit of um, kind of nostalgia for me. Uh, I, I really loved the bottle. It had a, a cool design. Um, some people refer to this as the, the belt buckle of the Basil Hayden. It used to have this really big kind of um, oversized label. The the metal here moved up and down a little bit. The um, the the cork up here has been redesigned. Actually, the whole bottle has been redesigned. And if you go into a liquor store, you'll see that Basil Hayden looks a lot like this now. But I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, the, the bottle was quite different. And like I said, it was my first expensive bottle of whiskey. At that point, Basil Hayden was somewhere in the $45 to, to $50 range, and it gave me everything that regular Jim Beam gave me, because it is a Jim Beam product, but just a little more refined, a little more um, fancy, like I said, if you will. So, this is obviously not the regular Basil Hayden. This is the Basil Hayden Toast. It is a new release, uh, relatively new. It's probably been out uh, at this point, maybe a year, maybe maybe nine months, give or take, something like that. But it's a relatively new release. Around these parts, if you can find the toast, um, it comes in at about 50 bucks. Now, why I say if you can find the toast, this is actually going to be a permanent release or a year round release. But as it first came out, it was a quite a difficult bottle to, to find. Uh, but now you should be able to start to, to find it a little more readily. When it first came out, this bottle was going for about a hundred bucks, but it should be somewhere around 55. Now, when I say a hundred bucks, I don't mean at your you know big box liquor stores. Generally, those tend to be pretty um, even keel with the prices, but uh, at your mom and pop liquor store, because it was a brand new product, because people really wanted it, yeah, they push the prices a little bit more. Uh, it does not have an age statement. Um, as most of Basil Hayden's line doesn't have an age statement, uh, there are there is a 10 year, and actually I do have, um, or used to have the 10 year, I actually don't know if it's on the shelf back there. We might have finished it in uh, on an episode, but um, the, the Basil Hayden toast is different for a couple of reasons. They're different than normal Basil Hayden, um, and that is, that it is made with a different mash bill. So if you know anything about Basil Hayden and Jim Beam's mash bills, um, between actually um, regular Jim Beam, I think old granddad, they all are 63% corn, 27% rye, and 10% malted barley. Um, now that I say that, I don't know if that's actually true for regular Jim Beam, but I do know that it's true for old granddad. And obviously my other Apoor with Drep and Stone, Old Granddad 114 is just a higher proof version of that. What's different about Basil Hayden, um, the toast specifically, is that they sub out the rye for brown rice. So regular Basil Hayden, the exact same mash bill, except it has that 27% rye. So this subs out the rye for brown rice. Now, Brewers and distillers have been doing this um, various points for some time, but it is a weird grain to find in American whiskey. Uh, what notes that tends to impart is, well, a little bit of an earthy kind of sweetness and a toasted note as well. They also 
take the the bottle or sorry they take the barrel and they toast the barrel even more i think it goes through let's see it goes through a, a second toasting of the barrel to really bring out uh those well roasty toasty notes which because it says toast, you should get on the nose. Uh, I don't think this is a bottle that we're gonna feature on the episode, so I think it's perfect for doing here on a pour with Dripper Stone. Let's stop talking, let's get into drinking. Not that it really super matters, but that is a fake cork. A little bit of a hefty pour, why not? Cap that. Stick that there. Here we go. Definitely can't roll this on its side. Uh, it'll be a little too much for that. But let's go ahead and nose this. Roll it just a little bit to kind of get the liquid up there in the glass, up towards the nose of the glass. On the first nose, it's really light in terms of proof, and it is only an 80 proofer, so I don't expect a whole lot of proof on the nose, but it's just, it's really light. It's kind of fresh, which is interesting because you would think that something that says toast, you're gonna get, again, a lot of those roasty, toasty, malty notes, but it's, it's kind of fresh and bright and floral. Acclimate a little bit, let's see what happens. Okay, there's the really nice, even keel sweet. And what, what I'm getting out of this too, is that that sweetness is uh, warm. It's really warm, it's well-rounded. It's kind of like a, like a butterscotch candy. Yeah, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, but like really butterscotch heavy. And I wonder if that's the rice that's toasted, the toasted um, rice here. Sorry, the brown rice, toasted barrel brown rice. All right color real quick uh, I would say uh, golden brown maybe maybe a slight darker shade of, of gold here uh, maybe golden honey if you really want to get specific all right let's uh let's dive in oh <clears throat> Woo. now that it's high proof but you get that first sip of the day. Whew. Kind of hit you a little bit. Okay, so right in a way, a lot of sweet on the palate. You know, those those nice butterscotchy notes on the nose just kind of dissipate. And it's a, a really um, sweet bomb, I, I'd say. And it's almost a... It's almost a, like a spiky sweet. And what I mean by that is it's not as well-rounded as you get on the nose. It doesn't seem as well-developed. Um, yeah, on the nose, you get this really nice, well-developed sweet. And then on the palate, it's just really, really one note. Now, that note is not a bad note. It's just one note. Really kind of sweet. Even on the back end, uh, there's this nice, slight bitter but it's not enough to to quell that sweet, or it's not enough to cut through that sweet. That's a bit of a problem for me, especially when you get a, a low proof kind of sweet bomb. I want a bitter that cuts through it, that just kind of eases me out of that sweet. Now, I'll get that here. I'm gonna chew it a little. It does have a nice finish though. The, the finish on it, it's not super thick, it's not super oily, but it definitely lingers with you. And actually, it is a bitter that does linger, um, but again, it's not enough to cut through the sweet. You just get so much sweet on the palate, there's not a whole lot of, of anything that cuts through the bitter. Or sorry, there's not a whole lot of anything that cuts through the sweet, and that's, that's what I want a bitter to do. And it, you know, because it's not super oily, it is a little bit on the lighter side in terms of mouthfeel too, which I would say, in this case, is kind of a negative. Um, it, it goes down super easy. Um, we don't like to use the S word on Drep and Stone, but this is a, I would say, a perfect beginner bourbon as regular Baden, Basil Hayden's is as well. 
Um, it's a it's a beginner bourbon. It's not something that I think is challenging in any way. It is something that you're probably not gonna mix, but it's it's not something that or it's it's a sweet bomb, and it's not something that I think someone who is pretty well versed in bourbon is going to to have a good time with. Now again, don't get me wrong, not a bad bottle. It's just not super interesting. It's really one note. And even after several sips through it, nothing sticks out. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, sweet, and then that that kind of lackluster bitter on the back end. I will say this, now that I'm kind of easing into it, that bitter becomes a little bit more pronounced. Just a little bit. Again, not enough to make me love this bottle. But uh, I'm gonna hang out with this bottle for a little while. Um, as we open a bottle, we see what happens to it. Um, we call it, you know, the bottle can breathe a little bit. And I wonder if the sweet in this bottle, if we let it breathe, drink it down to about halfway, see what happens. Um, I wonder if the sweet in the bottle is going to become a little more uh, subdued and maybe that bit bitter, excuse me, maybe that bitter will really cut through it and uh, open up this whiskey. And maybe it'll be a delightful whiskey as we get into it. Anyway. So again, this is the Basil Hayden Toast, and um, go pick up a bottle for yourself. See what you think. Cheers, everybody.